more than just Guy Clark or even Towns or, or anybody that's songwriting, their desire to, you know, want to be able to kind of go back to this thing of commerce, right? Like you want to make money off of your art, like you want to keep doing it, right? So you got to sort of like pick and choose your battles. What do you do? You know what? And it sort of touches on it a little bit in the film of like, why do you think, I mean, we can just start with Guy. Why do you think he didn't make it big? You know, I guess there's a lot of different, you know, lanes you could take with this, but what, whatever y'all think here. Well, one of the things is, you know, and we talk about this in the film, when he had the record deals with the major labels with RCA and Warner Brothers, you know, they were trying to fit the square peg of Guy Clark into the round hole of commercial country music. And I love commercial country music, you know, give, sure. I mean, I've been listening to country music a long time, but Guy is a folk singer. Guy is not a country music guy. And so it just never worked. And Guy, I think he wanted it to work, but he wanted his music to stay the way it was and translate. And the labels were like, you know, this yeah. is not going to work on the radio. So it just, it was just a mismatch. And as soon as Guy kind of gave that up and said, and said to himself, this is not working. And he went, you know, to Sugar Hill Records with Barry Poss, who said, you do the art and I'll figure out how to sell it. That's a whole That's different mindset, yeah. you know, yeah. and Barry Sugar Hill Records, um, which has now been bought and bought and bought. So it's part of the Concord group, I think. But back then, Sugar Hill Records was an independent label owned by this one person who had great taste in music. And he did, you know, folk music and Americana music and, and stuff that has an audience, but not the big mainstream audience like country music or pop music. Um, and so Barry knew what to do with Guy. And at the same time, um, Americana music got its own radio chart and, an, and a trade organization started around it. And so now there was a place for Guy. Yeah. Um, so that change in the business really sure. helped. So in my mind, Guy did make it and he has a lot of fans, you know, hundreds of thousands of fans. He's That's just true. not, he's just not Justin Timberlake, you know, yeah. he's not that mainstream. He's a niche yeah. person, you know. Um, but he, he understood that he had to, um, uh, he had to find a way to work within the music industry, you know, he, he, sure. and he found his place and he was very serious about it. Mm -hmm. You know, he cared about his publishing deal and he cared about commitments and, and being a grown up when it came to, you know, working within the industry, even if, you know, like he, he didn't, he was, he had his artistic integrity. He wouldn't, you know, try too too hard to write the next Garth Brooks uh, single, but he would uh, be an adult when it came to working in the industry. And he he uh, felt that Susanna and Towns didn't necessarily have that same uh, adult uh, view of the music industry. You know, they were more of just like having fun and whatever happens happens. But he really took it seriously all the way through his whole career he was very much professional about his work and the reason he yeah. lived in nashville is because this is where the publishing business is yeah. and he always wanted to go back to texas but felt that he couldn't because he needed to live in the same town as his publisher and that might have been true for most of his career because we didn't have you know the sure. internet communication the way we do now and he turned in his songs and he you know he had a booking agent and he had you know an uh, business accounting people and he showed up for interviews and he always, you know, he did all the, the work side of it. Um, and, and took it very seriously. And, it, you know, his calendars, he, he planned, you know, he had calendars and he planned ahead of when he was going to write, <laughs> wow. when he was going to handle business. And wow. so I think that kind of surprises some people that he did take Absolutely. the part seriously. Yeah. yeah at least planning out like writing and stuff like that. Um, 
you just have this like romanticized idea of songwriters on a peak of a mountain somewhere with a campfire writing every song that way you yeah know? and that's not the reality <laughs> of it right <laughs> yeah um it, it becomes it you know i guess to some extent i've interviewed a lot of musicians it just becomes not a job but i guess they say they just have to like like a workout like i have to you know sort of schedule it in that i'm gonna wake up and sit down and write at for you know from this time to this time and and do something you know productive or whatever i don't know i guess everybody's different you know writing is hard and and guy you know he would always say that he'd record an album when he had 10 great songs but it took him years to get 10 great songs for an album you know because it's And every day that he was home in Nashville, when he was not on the road, he wrote, you know, he scheduled those co-writes or he wrote by himself or whatever um, every day. And that's what, you know, any writer will tell you if they're serious about a project or serious about something you have to, you have to write, you have to sit your butt in the chair and write and it's hard. And, and he liked um, hearing what other people had written. He always wanted to hear, uh, oh, wow. your most recent song or what you were excited about, you know, he was always asking, uh, of the people, the songwriter and musician friends that came to his house, you know, what, what do you got? What's your newest yeah. song? He always wanted to hear somebody's newest song. And, uh, That's great. He, he wouldn't, um, uh, you know, he wouldn't just blow smoke at people about, well, he literally would blow smoke in your face <laughs> from his, <laughs> your face, but, uh, he, <laughs> figuratively figuratively, yeah. <laughs> figuratively. <laughs> no yes. literally he did but <laughs> yeah That's i mean funny. even even toward the end of his life when he was in so much pain and suffering you know someone would come over to see him at the nursing home or whatever and and he would say do you have a new song you know what's your new song i mean he it it, it was really important to him to hear other people's work which I always really admired that he cared so much about what other people were doing artistically. I once had a conversation with Guy for more than an hour when I was supposed to be interviewing him and he was interviewing me about ghostwriting. <laughs> how we did that and how it worked and, you know, and... Uh, He's he, inquisitive. He's curious, right? Um, very much. You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, in, that's a part of songwriting, I think. Um, you're curious about something and you want to spread a message i mean i'm sure there's lots of different ways um i wonder how many guy clark songs never no one's ever heard i mean i wonder what percentage hundreds. of songs he wrote did it make, you know what i mean oh man yeah there's there's many hundreds that have not wow. been heard yet i think maybe someday they will but wow yeah wow wow, wow. well he would find an idea if he heard an idea that he thought would make a good song you know he would write it down and then he might go back and work on it a little bit and then put it away for a while. And then uh, something would remind him of that idea. It's like, oh, I, I had a song that was sort of based on that idea. Let me go look. And then sometimes he would steal or, you know, repurpose stuff that he had written and never finished it, repurpose it into a newer idea of a song. So there's all kinds of, you know, work bits and pieces out there. I, you know, who knows? I don't know that it's cataloged in any way, but he did keep a lot of notebooks full of. Uh, oh my of gosh! Ideas I bet. I bet. Oh my goodness! Absolutely, just stuff that. Yeah, just letting it go. I mean, he he mentions in the film, right? If you if you have an idea or something, write it down quickly because you're going to forget more than likely. Mm-hmm. 